previously on how to make everything. In the quest to make my own suit from scratch, I traveled to Colorado to participate in the hemp harvest. Yeah! Went to Texas to pick my own cotton. I feel like I picked a lot more than just this. And learned the difficult process of shearing a sheep myself. There you go. Then I learned spinning, weaving, and knitting in order to turn these fibers into cloth. In the second episode, I'll be finishing up the remaining elements I need for my suit. Silk, alpaca fleece, and leather. My name is Andy George, and like most people, I have no idea where the stuff I use every day actually comes from. Thanks to modern transportation, a web of industries have built up to provide us with everything we need. But what if that network didn't exist and we had to do everything ourselves? My mission is to collect the raw materials and transform them into the final products we use every day, doing every step myself personally. This is How to Make Everything. Silk is a protein fiber produced by a variety of insects. However, its best known source is from the mulberry silkworm. First domesticated in China over 5,000 years ago, Silk's unique texture and luster made it a trade item with high demand and helped create the Silk Road, a trade route that allowed Chinese silk to be traded all the way to the Roman Empire. So valuable was the silk industry to China, attempting to spread its secret was punishable by death. Once hatched, silkworms take around a month to fully mature. During this time, their diet consists of only leaves from mulberry trees. Once fully grown, they excrete silk from their heads and proceed to form a silk cocoon around them out of one continuous thread. Thanks to the internet, I was able to order a batch of silkworm eggs online. I needed to keep them in a warm but dark environment to help incubate them and encourage them to hatch. After a few days, they emerged, barely the size of a grain of rice. Because silkworms eat a strict diet of only mulberry leaves, and because mulberry trees were out of season, I fed the silkworms dried mulberry leaf powder. With just a little water, it turns into a yummy paste the little guys love. Over the next few weeks, they would get bigger and bigger as I fed them more and more. So it's been about 28 days since my silkworms first hatched. It's about time they should start cocooning. I guess before they start to cocoon, they're gonna like give a really messy poop. <laughs> That's kind of the sign that they're about ready to cocoon. So I'm gonna watch out for that and then start transferring them into toilet paper rolls and that's gonna be what they cocoon in because they like a dark, isolated spot. Yeah, so I start out with these very tiny, I can barely even see them, and now they're just growing exponentially, and it's been kind of fun to watch them grow, just every day check up on them as they like double in size each day, and now they're pretty massive compared with how they started out, and now he's looking for food, wants some mulberry leaves, he's disappointed, I, he can't eat me. Back to my silkworms, they were finally starting to cocoon. Over the course of a day, they will wrap themselves in almost a mile worth of thread. The unfortunate fact about silkworm raising is that if you allow the cocoons to fully develop and the moths to emerge, they'll burrow through the thread, making it impossible to reel. So after a month of getting attached to my little guys, they'd have to be stifled with my oven. However, I did spare a few cocoons, as I was curious to see the last stage of the life cycle. The silk moth. Unfortunately, the fate is not much better. Emerging without even a mouth, all they do is mate, lay eggs, and die after three days. Through centuries of domestication, they aren't even capable of flying more than a few feet. Back to my other cocoons, I cleared the outer short fibers from them. Then the cocoons need to be soaked in hot water to release the end of the threads. So I have all the cocoons here by what I hope is the one long thread that makes up most of them. So now I'm going to combine them all into one thread and then wrap it around a toilet paper roll and hopefully they'll just all unravel and I'll have one nice long strong strand of silk.
After wheeling the silk for an afternoon, the silk thread was ready.